It's time to do a little pawn shop hunting and pick up some more games from the spring sales on various digital storefronts. It's the Bargain Game Hunter. It's been a while since we've been to this pawn shop. So let's take a look and see if they've gotten any more inventory on gaming stuff. Let's go. Alright, so I did pretty well in there. The main reason why I like going to that pawn shop besides its convenience is they have a deal where if you find five Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, or Wii games, you get them for five bucks. So I figure it's always worth taking a look at older generations in there. Not only that, but I picked out a handful of PlayStation 4 and Xbox One games just to see how much they were and they just flat out said, okay, three bucks each. I'm like, okay, well in that case, I might as well pick out the good ones. So I paid $18 for a grand total of nine games, which I think is pretty solid. Some of these I bought to flip. Now, I don't know how much these are worth necessarily because my phone was not having great service in there for some reason. So I got these kind of blind. But essentially what it boiled down to is I got five last gen games for five bucks total although oddly enough one of them is an xbox one game and the reason why i got that one is because i pulled out two different ones one from 360 one for original xbox and they didn't have either of them so i just grabbed a random xbox one game and they're like yeah we'll do that so i got that for a dollar too so sweet all right so our first game we got for a dollar is zumba fitness on the wii I know fitness games are doing quite well yet, right now, and this one's in pretty good shape. So I figure, you know what, I can probably flip this and make some quick money on it. So I don't know how much it's worth because my phone wasn't working, but I'll find out. I, I think I did okay for a dollar. Next one, and this one brings back memories because I had this growing up as a kid. We have DDR Max Dance Dance Revolution 2 on the PlayStation 2. The disc is in decent shape. I believe it's complete. Sorry, there's a lot of noise. No, it's not, it's missing the manual. But the disc is in there, it has the original case. It's in pretty decent shape. I don't know how much DDR games on the PS2 go for. Obviously you need the dance pad to actually be able to play it. But I figure it's nostalgic and also, you know, someone might have dance pads and need the game. So not a bad pickup there. This one I've never seen before. I hope it's worth something. It seems interesting. So we'll see when I can look it up. Pride FC Fighting Championships on the PlayStation 2. I don't know what this is. It's a fighting game of some sort on PS2. Uh, I paid a dollar for it. Hopefully it's worth something. I know a lot of fighting games or wrestling games are worth a lot of money right now. So I figure it's worth a gamble, especially for a dollar. Worst comes to worst, when we eventually get a PS2, Corey might want to play it. Uh, next, I got Saints Row the Third on the PlayStation 3. This one, like a lot of the other ones, uh, is missing the manual, but it's got the disc. It's got the original case. Yeah, it's an older Saints Row game. It's probably not worth a whole lot, but considering the other games that were there, I think this was one of the better options. And for a dollar, eh. The last game I got for a dollar, and this was the Xbox One game that I slipped in because... They didn't have any of the games I was looking for for the last spot. Alakine's Gun on the Xbox One. I know this game is bad. I'm kind of down to collect bad games if I could get them to super cheap because it'd be kind of fun to play on the channel. I don't think I have this one, but I figure for a dollar for an Xbox One game, it's, it's worth it. These are the four Xbox One PlayStation 4 games that I picked up. And I already know based on looking up two of them, that these are worth what I paid and more. So I paid a total of $3 for each of these, and I think I did well overall. First, we have Marvel Spider-Man on the PS4. 
It is disc only, but it does come with this uh, PS4 case that says Spider-Man on the side and an NBA sticker. I owned this game at one point. I traded it into GameStop because I figured I'll get the PS5 version eventually. So now I have the PS4 version again. I paid three bucks for it. Should be an easy flip. I think it's worth like 12 even disc only. I kind of tempted to look up how much it's worth at GameStop because I might just trade this in so I don't have to worry about trying to sell it disc only. I'll keep the case, but we'll see. But yeah, Spider-Man on the PS4. Next we have WWE 2K17 on the PS4. WWE games are selling for a lot of money right now, especially the older ones. Uh, this one is complete in pretty good shape. I think I can get like 12, 13 bucks for this. I sold uh, one on the PS3 recently and it sold instantly. So I bet you I can get that pretty quickly on this one as well. It's in decent shape. The case is a little rough, but I could probably fix it. So WWE 2K17, three bucks, pretty easy flip. This one I got for the collection, mostly because I don't have the physical copy. I know it's on Game Pass, but again, you know, with Game Pass games, they might get removed one day, you never know. Pillars of Eternity, it is an RPG from Obsidian. Looks fun, I've heard it's really good. Now I have a physical copy of it on Xbox One. It's not worth a whole lot of money, but that's fine. I paid three bucks for it, I'm not complaining. And last, but certainly not least, and you'll be amazed that I found this again. <laughs> Duck Dynasty on the Xbox One this time. The PS4 version is worth surprisingly a lot of, of money, a lot more than I expected. It was like, I think I'm, I currently have it listed on eBay for like 15. That's about what it's worth. I don't know how much the Xbox One version is worth. I'll probably list it as well, but worse comes to worse. If not, I'll just keep it and play it on the channel. But yeah, another copy of Duck Dynasty. So there we go, nine games paid a total of $18. I think that is a very good score. They did have a couple consoles and I thought about at least talking to them about, I did talk to them about the Switch. They had a Switch Lite in there for 140, which is not bad. I'm trying to slow down on my big purchases right now. So even though that's not a bad price, I just didn't want to pull the trigger on something that expensive. They also had a 2DS for 50. That one I should have asked about, I didn't. Mostly just because, again, I'm trying to pare down. So, or not pare down, but like slow down a bit on grabbing stuff, even if it's an easy flip. If they would have sold it to me for 30, I probably would have snagged it just because it was a 2DS in pretty good shape. But I'm, I'm okay right now. I think getting nine games for less than 20 bucks is pretty good, so. There we go, that was my trip to the pond. So I'm on my way to McDonald's to pick up some lunch and came across this random thrift store along the way. Do I think they have video games? Probably not, but I can't have to look. So uh, let me go take a look and see what I can find, if anything. So surprisingly enough, I did find some video games. However, they were locked up in a jewelry case. And when I asked the uh, employee behind the counter at the front about it, she said that apparently someone else operates that section of the store and they weren't in. So I couldn't look at them. That's weird. I don't get that at all, but I tried waiting around for a little bit and they never showed. So I figure I'm gonna go get lunch and then I might check back right afterwards. And if they happen to show up, great. If not, I guess I'm gonna pass. The only games I saw were a Shrek game on PS2, Chess Master on PS2. There was an Xbox game. I couldn't tell what it was. I think there was another one behind it. And then there was a, uh, a PC game on top. I don't care about the PC game, but the other games, if they were, you know, a couple bucks, I'd be tempted. So I don't know. It's annoying that they just won't sell them because the person's not here. That's weird, but whatever. So I decided that since Spider-Man is worth $8.80 in trade-in, rather than trying to sell it online disc only, I was gonna trade in the GameStop and probably pick up another four for 20. Let's see what I get. Okay, so I'm back and this is gonna kind of be a mega recap because I'm not only going to tell you the values for the games I picked up at the pawn shop, I'm also gonna show you the GameStop stuff that I picked up and talk about stuff I picked up at the digital store. 
So it's kind of all of the recaps in one, sort of speak. So let's get going. First, we're gonna start with our value pawn pickup. So essentially what I was able to do is I did the five for five deal where I picked up five past gen games for a total of five bucks each. So those were each a dollar. Then I picked up four additional games that were from current gen systems, sort of. I mean, they're PS4 and Xbox One and got those for $3 each. So I paid a total of $18 for all of these. I did pretty well in terms of value. So the first game we're gonna show off is this disc only copy of Pride FC Fighting Championships for the PS2. It's a fighting game I didn't really know anything about. I was hoping it was gonna be kind of a gem that wasn't gonna be worth, that was gonna be worth a whole lot of money. It's not, it's worth $8 disc only, which is not terrible considering I paid a dollar, but I was hoping it'd be more. Next up, we have Saints Row the Third on the PS3. Paid a dollar for this. It's worth about five, so nothing substantial, but you know, I need another dollar game to make the deal, so that worked out. This one I picked up specifically to flip, and I think I did pretty well on it. We have Zumba Fitness on the Wii. Fitness games are doing pretty well right now because again, with the pandemic still kind of going, not kinda, it's still going. People are trying to find ways that they can work out without leaving the house necessarily. So that one, of course it was a dollar, it's worth nine. So decent value there. Next one, and I haven't finished cleaning it up. I still got some stickers, I gotta peel off of it, but we have DDR Max 2. I used to own this game as a kid with the dance pad. It was a lot of fun. I used to be pretty decent at it. I'm sure I would be terrible now. <laughs> I picked this up for a dollar. It's worth about seven, so not terrible. And then my last dollar game, and this one, the only reason why it's a dollar is because I picked out two other games. First one was Red Faction Gorilla, and then the second one was a poker game for the original Xbox. And both of them, they didn't have the discs for. So they're like, just pick out another game and we'll, we'll give you the deal. So I picked this out and they, they let me do it. We have Alakine's Gun on the Xbox One. It's generic case only, but the game's there. It's in decent shape that one is worth about seven. So considering I paid five bucks and every single one of those games is worth at least five bucks, I think I did pretty well. So now we're gonna get into the slightly more expensive games. And most of these I got to flip except for one. So we're gonna start with WWE 2K17 on the PS4. This game is currently going for about 13 bucks on eBay right now. So definitely a solid entry to flip. Keep an eye out for WWE games because a lot of times they're in pretty high demand. Good old Duck Dynasty. <laughs> it's funny how I have a PS4 copy on my eBay store and now I have an Xbox One copy as well. Although honestly, I might keep this one just for the hell of it. It's worth about 10, so it is worth less than the PS4 copy, but eh. Whatever, it's Duck Dynasty. And then the last game, which is one I actually bought to keep, is Pillars of Eternity Complete Edition on the Xbox One. This one's not worth a whole lot. It's worth five bucks. I paid three for it, so, eh, not terrible. And hey, now I have a physical copy of Pillars of Eternity, so another interesting RPG to add to the collection. So now we're gonna get to the GameStop one. So I did have another game, and that was Spider-Man on the PS4. I decided after looking it over, that because it was disc only and because it wasn't in amazing shape, it had some, some damage on the top of the disc, which doesn't affect the actual game. The game should have played fine. Rather than trying to sell it online, I was just gonna trade it into GameStop because it was worth about eight bucks. Now, they did take off a you know damage fee or whatever, so I didn't get as much for it as I would have liked. I still got more for it than I paid but not as much as I would have liked, but that's okay, whatever. Uh, so I ended up getting about five bucks in trading credit for Spider-Man. And I decided, well, since I'm going to GameStop, let's do another one of those good old four for 20s. So essentially this is four for 15 because I saved money on Spider-Man. So our first game, and I will also say before I show you these, it's becoming a lot harder to find games for this bundle, at least in my store, because most of the $10 titles are gone. <laughs> There were a couple, like, I honestly re thought about rebuying a game that I had already, but I, like, I'm loaning it out. So I thought about just having a second copy. I didn't want to do that. Thankfully, I found a game that I could use to make up for it. So first game we got from GameStop is Project High Rise on the Xbox One. 
This is like a 2D retro city builder type game. Looks pretty interesting. Of course, I paid five bucks for this and it is worth 12. So it's actually worth a pretty good amount of money. A lot more than you think it would be. So cool, Project High Rise. This one was one that I saw it was 10 bucks and it seems interesting. I have no idea if it's good or not. I'll find out. We have Yuku's Island Express on the Xbox One. Apparently it's like a platformer and it has pinball mechanics and open world stuff. I have no idea what this is. We'll find out. We paid five bucks for it. It is worth seven, so a little more than what I paid. This one I saw on the PS4 and I've never, I wouldn't consider myself a fan of this series, but I figure, you know, for 10 bucks and plus it gives you like the ability to build your own. That's kind of cool. Why not? We have new Gundam Breaker on the PS4. Apparently it allows you to build your own Gundam and then you can fight with it. That's cool. Sounds interesting enough. Paid five bucks for this and it is worth 11. So again, decent return on how much I paid. And I like to consider this last one free because essentially I paid for three of the four games and then the last one was free. We have Sniper Elite 3 on the Xbox 360. It does come on a generic GameStop case, but interestingly enough, it is, an, it is an authentic 360 case and it does come with the manual, but not the artwork. So that's kind of interesting, but I didn't pay anything for this. It's technically free and it's worth eight bucks. So I'd say I did pretty well. So those were all the physical games that I picked up this week, but I also went shopping on the digital storefronts because this past week has been the spring sale on pretty much every digital storefront. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go through the stores and find games that are like super, super cheap that I can pick up uh, to add to my collection. Now, I will tell you, because these are all digital purchases, I will not assign any value to them. It's not that they're valueless, but I can't resell them. I can't trade them in. So because of that, I'm not going to consider any kind of value for these games. They're just, they're purchases. That's it. So we're gonna start off with the Nintendo Switch eShop for the spring sale. First game I picked up was Siberia 1 and 2. Now, I recently picked up Siberia 3 on the Xbox One and I saw that 1 and 2 were on sale for a whopping $2 on the Nintendo eShop. So I figured, you know what, why not? That way I have the entire set. For one and two on the Switch, and then three on the Xbox One. Oddly enough, the second one by itself is also on sale, but for more money than one and two. No idea what the deal is with that. Next game I picked up, and I know this game is bad. I was very intrigued by it when I first started reading about it, and then I read more and more about it, and it's just bad. But I only paid two bucks, so I don't feel too ashamed, I guess. <laughs> I picked up Agony on the Switch. So if you don't know what Agony is, it is essentially a walking simulator puzzle type game where you're in hell and you see all these like really distorted, like disturbing monstrosities and like, the concept is interesting. Apparently it's not well executed at all, but for two bucks, I'm like, you know, I might as well try it, can't hurt. So picked up Agony on the Switch for two bucks. Next I went to the PlayStation store and this bundle, when I first saw it, I thought it was absolutely incredible and it is an incredible deal. What I didn't realize is that I already own two of the games on a different platform, but now I own them on two platforms, so, you know. And the best part is, even though I bought two of the games again, the third game by itself is still worth more than the money that I paid, so I don't feel too bad about it. The EA Family Bundle on the PlayStation 4 includes Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, Need for Speed, the reboot on last gen consoles, and Unravel. So three pretty solid EA titles for a grand total of $4 on sale. It's a bundle that's normally $30. $4 for three full EA games, that's a fantastic deal. So I picked it up. Now I do already own Garden Warfare 2 and Unravel on Xbox One, but now I own them on PS4 as well. And I used to own Need for Speed, I got rid of it a long time ago. Now I own it on PlayStation 4. So, hey, what do you know? It works out. Last uh, shop that I checked out was the Xbox shop 
the Microsoft Store online, and I picked up two games. Both were around the $4 mark. One was a little bit less, but they were about four bucks each. First was Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. It's a game I've heard a lot about. One of the first games by Joseph Fares, who's the guy who made It Takes Two, which just came out, and A Way Out. I'm excited to play it. I've heard nothing but good things about it. And I mean, for four bucks, that's a slam dunk. And then the last one is Goosebumps the Game, made by Way Forward. It looks like a like an old school point and click adventure style thing based around Goosebumps, which is kind of cool. And it was $3.75. So again, for a game that cheap, why not? Give it a shot, see how it is. Even if it's, I get an hour or two out of it, that's still definitely worth the little bit of money that I paid. So there you go. That is the roundup for all of the stuff that I picked up this week. And that is going to do it for this episode of the Bargain Game Hunter. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're new around here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell. That way you know when new videos drop. We drop videos on this channel all the time. And uh, every now and again, we do giveaways. I've already given away three of my codes. I need to get more codes. Don't worry, I will. And when I do, I will have more giveaways on this series. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time on The Bargain Game Hunter. Bye bye